I've been using the Sony FX3 for over a year now on a variety of different shoots from documentaries, corporate interviews, lifestyle, the list goes on. And in that time, with a lot of trial and error, my camera rig has evolved into what I believe is the perfect run and gun hybrid camera setup. Before we go ahead with this setup, don't think that you need to buy all of this kit because it will make your footage look any better. These are all just accessories that will make your life that a little bit easier. But ultimately, if you've got a bit of extra money lying around that you want to invest in kit, then it's probably a better choice to put that money into things like lighting, audio equipment, lenses, things that will actually help make your image look better. However, you're already watching this video, which means you've probably made up your mind about rigging out your FX3. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. First things first, small rig tool. If you haven't got one of these, well, sort it out. No rig is able to be built without the heart of the setup, the body. In our case, the Sony FX3. Start by attaching a cage to the camera's body. I'm using the half cage from small rig. Secure it with the threads on the bottom and on the side. It just gives you a little bit of extra stability. We're gonna add a small NATO rail on top of the camera, which comes with the half cage. This does remove the option to use the hot shoe on top of the camera, but for my use case, we won't be needing that anyways. We're gonna take an Argus Swiss plate and 15 millimeter rod base plate from small rig and join the two together. Make sure this is super tight as it does have a tendency to work its way a little loose sometimes. Add the 6 inch 15mm rods, don't worry about alignment, these will straighten themselves out later on. Onto the cheese plate, we're going to combine it with the 15mm rod adapter. Once that's on, we're going to grab the Nitsy power adapter and attach that to the cheese plate and make sure you screw it into these holes. A little side note, I've removed the little pin that usually locks in the V-mounts to the camera and it just means that I can keep the screen really flush against the camera's body. Hi there, future Tom coming in just to kind of make up for my little mistakes. Hello, Arlo. I realized I forgot to explain the part where you're meant to take the power adapter part and the base plate and push the two together. Earlier on in the video when I said that the rails would sort themselves out, this is the part where that happens because when you push the plate on, it like pushes against the, the rails basically and kind of aligns them. And then the camera's cage has already got an Arca Swiss mount built into it. So you don't have to attach anything there, just literally mount the camera directly to the base plate. But yeah, sorry, I forgot to explain that. Enjoy. The lens I'm using is the Sigma 24 to 70, and I've just got an 82 millimeter adapter ring for the small rig matte box, which we'll cover a little bit later on. We're gonna take our ND filter and attach this to the 82 millimeter matte box ring. But before you do this, make sure you blow out, N <laughs> blow out any dust that's sitting on the lens or the ND filter. Now for the boring bits, we're gonna take the DC cable and plug that into our Nitsy power adapter. And we're just gonna run the cables like I'm doing so here, securing it with the thumb screws for a little bit of extra added security. We're gonna repeat this on the other side. And as you can see, the thumb screws just act as a bit of a cable management for the camera, ensuring that we don't have any cables flopping around when we're filming. Now, I was using this top handle from Small Rig originally. It looks really cool, it's great. But if we take off this handle and mount on this one, we can see when we pick it up that the camera's off balance and it just makes for quite an uncomfortable, unsteady shooting setup. So I swapped that out. This led me to purchase in the Nitsy Stinger handle and you can see that when I've got that on the rig and I pick it up, the camera's basically perfectly balanced. It's super comfortable to hold. We're gonna take this NATO monitor mount and actually mount it backwards to the top handle. Now, you're probably thinking, what? But, bear with me. No camera rig build is complete without an external monitor. In my case, we're gonna use the Atmos Ninja 5. The build quality is great. The screen has a nice amount of output if you're shooting outside, and it gives you all the extra features like your histograms, false colors, all the specky bits. We're gonna attach the power adapter that allows you to power the monitor using external DC power, and then connect the SSD. Now, you don't need to do this part, but I'm usually using an SSD to record to my Ninja externally, as it gives you little extra features like ProRes and ProRes Raw. ProRes Raw recording. <laughs> if you're gonna do this, be ready for those hefty file sizes. Take the two inch NATO rail that you would usually mount to the handle and actually mount this to the monitor instead. The reason I'm doing this is because it allows me to quickly release the monitor from the top handle while keeping the nice slim profile of the Ninja 5. This bit may not matter to you that much and if you wanna do it the normal way, then that's absolutely fine. It doesn't actually make a difference to the overall camera setup. 
We're going to slide that onto the top handle and then we're going to lock it using the red pin. At this point you can plug in the DC cable that we attached earlier on into the monitor. A little extra step, I'm going to add this cold shoe adapter plate thingy to the top of the Ninja 5. By adding a couple of layers of tape, this just creates a snug fit and make sure the accessories don't fall out. Guess what, future Tom again. I forgot to explain another part. You need to put the battery on the camera, of course. It, it just makes sense. The one I'm using in the video is the brand new small rig. Uh, the VB99 Pro. It's great. It's It's got all the little bits on it that's, you know, that you want from a V-mount. Following on from the V-mount battery, I didn't do this in the video, but I do usually do it when I'm on shoots, so I'm not sure why I didn't include it. I don't use a dummy battery for the camera. I use one of the normal NP batteries. NP... N... N... NZ. I use one of the normal Sony batteries and the reason I do this is because it makes the camera, I believe it's called hot swappable. If you use a USB-C cable from the V-mount to the camera, that battery in the camera will constantly be charging while the V-mount is powering everything. It works really well. Um, but yeah, again, I just forgot to talk about it in the video. Anyways, back to the actual video. Okay, we're gonna continue making this Sony FX3 into an absolute beast camera setup. I'm using a right angle HDMI and I'm actually using the right angle side on the camera. If you use a right angle cable on the monitor itself, then it actually blocks the output HDMI, meaning that you can't use it. Now, the next step is a little bit extra, but it kind of works, so I'm just gonna go with it. I gently release the Arca Swiss clamp part. I tuck the cables in just behind that and then close it. Keeps the cables really clean. It's a bit of extra cable management and again ensures that the cables aren't flopping around when we're filming. Keeping on the topic of cable management, I'm going to take a little bit of Velcro and slot that through the 15mm rod mount that's built into the Sony cage. I don't use a rod up here so this doesn't really get in the way of anything and it keeps the cables really neat. I'm using the new DJI Mic 2S. Attach the receiver to the cold shoe plate on the small rig half cage. Again, I've secured this with a couple of layers of tape. Grab your aux, plug it in and then we're just going to wrap it around the body just for that extra bit of cable management. Now the small rig matte box provides that finishing touch. Tighten it securely to the lens. The reason I'm using a matte box is so that I can control unwanted light. And of course, also has the added bonus of being able to charge your clients a lot more money. Worth every penny. <laughs> I don't really need a handle on the right side of the camera because I use the body's handle, but this walnut handle from small rig just looks so good. We're gonna place this on the left side of the camera rig. At this stage, your camera rig is ready for action. And to be honest, this is how my rig looks 90% of the time. Sometimes even without the wooden handle on the side. But for those seeking that little bit of extra sauce, we're gonna consider adding something like a transmitter. I'm using the Raveneye from the DJI RS3 combo kit. This just slides into that cold shoe plate that we attached earlier on. And then we're gonna connect it easily to the HDMI out on the monitor. If you already own the RS3 gimbal, then this transmitter is just a no-brainer, really. The clients are always impressed when you hand them an iPad and they can see the image, meaning that they're not looking over your shoulder. While it's not gonna be featured in the rest of the video, it does showcase the camera's versatility for more advanced monitoring features. And there you have it. That is the Sony FX3 camera rig build. I know I'm gonna get some comments about the lack of XLR input on the camera. I don't use XLR on the camera itself. If I am using XLR, it's usually on something like a zoom recorder. Doing it this way just means that I've got two sources of audio as two different backups. I've got the lav mics, which are directly on the camera. And then I've also got something like a shotgun mic connected to a zoom. This works for all of the shoots that I do. And I don't really find that I have to use the XLR handle that often. So this rig for me stays nice and dense, keeps it compact, but also looks the part and adds a little bit of extra functionality to the camera rig. And I mean, it just looks sick. I mean, look at that. Tell me that doesn't look wicked. If you found this video useful or you have any questions about something that maybe I haven't included, feel free to drop a comment below. Thanks for stopping by. I'll catch you in the next one. Have you got anything to say on this matter? No, don't, don't lick it. Speak. No, speak. No, speak. Woof. Woof. No. I'll look like woof. Oh, woof. Test the 32-bit float. Speak.
Good boy. Good boy. You know what you can eat? That's my new microphone.